Yippee, there'll be no wedding bells for today. Hi guys, and welcome to the New Vegas Mod Clinic. Part 15. It has been almost two years since I have made one of these videos because it has been almost two years since I played Fallout New Vegas. However, I am playing the game again and I am looking forward to checking out lots of great new mods and perhaps showing them to you guys. Now I do appreciate that you guys may well know the best mods to use better than I do. You have probably been playing a lot more recently than I, and I do welcome any suggestions you have down below, so feel free to give me any feedback. However, to start the series off, I do have two mods I really do think are great and would like to share them with you guys just in case you missed them. And the first mod I'm going to show you is called Jip Companion Command and Control. And this is a great mod if you like to play with followers. As you can see on the left hand side, I have two icons, one for Eddie, one for Boone. The red bar indicates their current health status, and the little green F next to their faces indicates they are currently in follow mode, as in, I move, and they follow. Now, you can actually have up as many followers as you like, I think, uh, I saw at least five or six available spaces. I assume it allows more. I've only got two, so that's what we're going to deal with here. Now, don't worry if you're thinking, I don't want those icons on the heads-up display. They destroy my immersion. You can change it in the mod configuration. It's actually very configurable, and you can set the avatars of visibility to selection mode only. And that occurs when I press the head the heads up display interface hotkey, the basically the command key. So now you can see it's disappeared. When I press the command key, they reappear and you see the red one, that is the one I currently have selected um, or can select. If I use the mouse wheel to move down, I can now select Boone and just, you know, if I had more, obviously I'd be able to rotate through them all. I'm going to press the middle mouse button to command Eddie and then I'm going to tell him to stop following me by pressing the middle mouse button again. I release the key and it disappears. And as you can see, Boone continues to follow. Eddie doesn't. And I can do the same once again. This time I'm going to tell him, I'm going to tell Eddie to follow me again. I'm going to press the right mouse button, which deselects Eddie, rotate down for Boone, select him, and tell him I'll to wait. Tight. And as you saw, I could actually command Eddie even when I wasn't in dialogue range, which is very, very useful indeed. And again, same with Boone. Follow. Now, you may be a little annoyed by all the text that's popping up. I'm going to remove that now. That is a tutorial help and is nice and is useful, but honestly, it's completely unnecessary. I think the mod author has made it so obvious what all of these... Um, options do, you don't need it. So now I press the command button, I select Eddie, and as you can see, no text. This one is obviously telling Eddie to stay close. I can tell him to keep his distance. I can obviously do the same with Boone. And again, you use the mouse wheel to move up and down on this on this uh, side as well. And That's the right mouse Eddie button best. to go back to the select. And you can just keep giving them commands. You can even access the inventory. Now the inventory will only be accessed if you are reasonably close. So I will tell Eddie, I'm going to tell Eddie to wait and then I'm going to run over here and whilst I can still give him commands it won't let me activate. There you go, Eddie is too far away to share items with which is nice because that would be a little immersion breaking. You probably also notice when I press the activation key that the icon for Eddie is now showing a W in white saying Eddie is waiting so I can see his status. I'm going to select Boone and I'm now going to activate um, a different command. This is the guard command and I'm going to tell him, I'm going to use the middle mouse button to tell him to guard over there. I'll sit tight. And he draws his weapon and he runs off and he will stay in this area guarding it now. And you can see a little G next to his face. And again, if I want to get him to follow, I just tell him, follow again. I'm going to do the same with Eddie as well. 
Although it takes a, a little getting used to, just opening them up, deselecting, and so on, it is actually remarkably easy. And you do get used to it pretty quickly. And it gives you a lot of control from fairly long range, so I can move them around the map as much as I want. There are also some <laughs> interesting options. For example, you can tell your follower to attack. Now, if I put the center of the screen on the Great Khan, as you can see, he flashes orange. I can now tell Boone to attack him. I'm not actually going to do that. If there was a trap or a locked item or a computer, I could tell him to deactivate it or pick it. You can't do that with non-human followers, but you can with the human followers. Or I could tell him, hey, just relax, I'll sit tight. chill out, and he'll hang around and relax. Now, you can actually customize the way the whole thing looks. You can go along to JIP command, uh, sorry, companion control and command, and change all the keys. You can change the avatar bar property. Um, it currently displays five as a maximum. You can change that if you want. You can scale it, make it a little smaller, and you can even move it a little, well, you can move it around different positions. Completely up to you, and if you're using it with adjustable hood, obviously you can adjust all the other uh, icons to wherever is best for you. But you can also move the command bar properties and scale them down a bit if you find them a little obtrusive, and you can move them around. You can't move them off screen. You can only move them somewhere around the center, but actually you shouldn't worry about that. Believe it or not, it's nice to have it fairly close to the center of the screen. And the reason for that is when you're commanding your follower and you want him to, for example, go somewhere, it's kind of nice to be looking vaguely at the center of the screen before you start doing these things. So I'm gonna move him there. Whereas if the icon was off at the edge of the screen, it actually makes it a little more difficult. So although at first I wanted those icons to be moved right off screen, I've changed my mind. Having them in the center is good. And then, of course, I can just close down and carry on playing. And lastly, the mod actually does give you an option to give the followers true passive mode. So they don't attack their, your enemies or they only attack after you attack. Um, so, you know, that is a useful feature as well. All round, this mod is very useful if you are using followers. It's very well done, it's polished, and once you get used to the interface, you can command your followers to do things without really much effort. It's very convenient indeed. I am actually really impressed with this mod, and I really wish somebody would make something like this for Skyrim. Major thumbs up, really do appreciate this mod, and it is staying in my load order. Now, the second and last mod I'm going to show you is by a mod author called Zelandro, who has a very popular EMB mod and has been very helpful to me personally in messing around with EMB settings, but he is also working on a lot of very cool animation-based mods. And the first one I'm trying out is called True Lean, and it is really cool. It adds leaning mechanics to Fallout New Vegas. Now, if you're a stealth character, that is going to be very useful. I am going to get close to this car and then lean out. And as you can see, I can lean out at and glance at that great car. And if you are wondering whether you can lean around and shoot things, the answer is you can. Although sometimes it seems a little glitchy and you might find yourself shooting the van itself instead of around the corner. On the whole, it works okay. I think there you can see my bullet is actually hitting something here, whereas on the other side it hits. So it's not perfect, but it does actually allow you to take some shots. But I generally don't shoot things around the corner anyway. I use the lean mechanic to spot what is there and get a new position. Great mod, lot of potential to add, um, you know, that good stealth feeling. This is one I'm going to keep in my load order as well, and I'm going to be checking out a lot of the other ones he's developing. For example, the ability to bash people with the butt of your rifle. That looks very cool indeed. 
Okay guys, well, that's it for this video. I am looking for feedback. I, I do want to know what you guys think and I am very interested in finding out a lot of great mods to try out myself and then of course show you guys. So leave any suggestions you've got down in the comments below. I will read them. Uh, yeah, in a week's time, hopefully another video. You are more than welcome to join me for that. I look forward to seeing you guys there and until then, as always, you know the deal. Have fun. Cause I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, jingle.